Hello, my friend. Ewell Humphrey is here to share with you again another message from the Bible. I will speak to you on the fact that it is good to pray the prayers of the Bible. It's good to pray the prayers of the Bible. And it's good because we know the Bible is the Word of God, and we can learn. We can only touch on a few things that, that maybe help us in our prayer life. And prayer is so important to God's people. It's important to the fact that we need to pray all the time. I want to speak to you on the first thing we need to do is praise the Lord. When you're praying, praise the Lord. This the psalmist did. We get from his prayer a pattern of praying. It says, I will praise the Lord God with all my heart because all things were made by him. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides upon the wings of the wind. He made everything in heaven and in earth. And so because of his great power, we need to praise the Lord. He made you and me. He made us all. And if we're Christians, he's made us to become Christians. Hallelujah. And he's got a home in heaven for us. Oh, praise the Lord. Learn to praise God for the good and for the bad. Praise him for the bitter things and for the sweet things. Praise the Lord because he does all things right. And we need to wait on him and let him work it out. And he'll work it out according to his perfect will. Over in Romans, the 12th chapter, and just, we ought to listen to the prayer of one who prayed for the will of God. And that was Paul the Apostle. Paul says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And we need to do that. We don't want to live like the world. The world believes that they can do anything that that's possible for man to do. They don't believe in God. And so we need to conform, not to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to change our mind about things and put our minds on the things of God and the Bible. And then he'll help us to know that we shall recognize the perfect will of God for our lives. So we need to pray for God's will need to praise God, and then we need to pray, Lord, your will be done in our lives. We pray for that, and that's so important. And let's try to pray to be humble. Pray, pray for humility and to overcome pride. Pride. Bible says over here in the, in the uh, 11th chapter of Matthew, here's a prayer that Jesus prayed is a good thing for us to pray. He said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast hid these things that I've taught from the wise and the prudent of this world, and you reveal them unto babes. Even so, Father, it seemeth good in thy sight. And so he's saying here that the things of God are revealed many, many times to those that are seemingly unworthy. Not college professors, not men of great knowledge, oh, but those that are humble. Those that are humble. It's good to have knowledge. It's good to learn things, but oh, praise God, never get to the place where you know it all. You need to be humble and let God be your strength and be a child, have a childlike humility depending on God instead of yourself. And that's important to pray like that. Lord, help us to pray. And then in Luke 23, the, the Lord Jesus teaches us a couple of things about praying in, in according to his prayer. He prayed as they nailed him to that cross for you and for me. He prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. So here's a prayer we need to pray. Pray for forgiveness of those who hurt you. Pray that God will forgive them and help them to overcome. And then in the same chapter, he prayed when he came to the, to the place where he was going to leave this world. And before he bowed his head and gave up his spirit and died on that cross, he prayed and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And so when we come to that last time of our lives, we need to commit our spirit to God. We need to do that while we're living right now. Lord, I commit my life to you. <coughs> this is very important. And so prayer is so very, very important. Thank God for prayer. <coughs> Someone said they read through the Bible and found out that actually the Lord never did teach his disciples how to, how to preach. 
but he taught them how to pray. Because, you see, when we pray, then we'll have power with God in order to preach. And so we need to pray. We need to call on the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Joseph Scribner wrote a great hymn, wrote it in a time of sorrow and a broken heart over the loss of his dear uh, one that he was engaged to marry. And she was drowned in an accident, and he was broken. But he, he wrote a poem and put it up on a shelf. And uh, after he had prayed and turned things over to God, a friend came by and found it and took it down and had it published into a hymn. And it's been sung for a hundred years, a greatest hymn, one of the top hymns of all times. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Are you weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends dismay and forsake thee? Or is there trouble anywhere? In his arms he'll take and receive thee. Oh, take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. If you need to pray a prayer, another great prayer is in, in uh, uh, teaches us it's in in uh, the Bible, Second Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, when Saul of Tarsus was converted on the Damascus road, the Lord spoke to him from heaven, and and he was on the ground on his knees looking up, and he said, "Lord, what would you have me do?" That's a good prayer. Lord, what would you have me to do? Pray that prayer every day and ask God to guide you in what you need to do. And God will bless you. He'll make a way for you and he'll help you. What would you have me to do? I prayed this, this, this very day and I felt the Lord said, put another message on the YouTube. And that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, dear friend, if you haven't prayed and asked God to forgive you, the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from a devil's hell, saved forever. So pray a prayer like this and mean it from your heart as best you can. Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for all my sins upon the cross. I believe he rose again. And I believe he's coming back. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. And help me live for you. Amen and amen. Pray a prayer like that. And you'll live forever. And then my friends, my Christian friends, I want you to know that we need to praise God because the prayers of the Bible teach us to praise God. We need to seek God's will. That's so important for our lives. We need to pray with thanksgiving for his blessings. We need to pray for our daily bread, as they prayed for our daily bread, we need to pray for our daily needs. We need to pray and ask God to forgive those who hurt us. We need to pray, commit our lives to him and say, Lord, what would you have me do today? These are just some thoughts in prayer. God bless you. God keep you close to him. God loves you and I love you. And may the Lord bless and be blessed. Amen. And amen.